four golden retrievers and they use various mixes of German Shepherds and in the past they've even used dogs like Bernese dogs and they've even used Newfoundland dogs so guide dogs have used lots and lots and lots of different dogs now can anyone think why <coughs> the first guide dogs that were used were German Shepherds and where the whole idea of guide dogs came from now the clue is in the name of the dog they're called German German Shepherds anybody know what country might be? Germany hey oh, yeah. nice. well, goodness you're really clever the very first guide dogs in Europe were trained in Germany and they used German Shepherds and that's why when the United Kingdom started their training in 1931 they used German Shepherds as well now over the years guide dogs started their own breeding program in the 1950s and they decided well we better try different types of dogs and the dog they found that is the easiest one to train is the most biddable dog and the one that probably won't be able to work the longest probably a Labrador or a Retriever now the problem with a Labrador is does anyone know what Labradors really really like doing they like eating Labradors eat and eat and eat and eat if you allow them. If you allow them. That's why you see a lot of overweight Labradors as pet dogs. So what guide they've got dogs? lovely faces and they look at their owners and their owners go, oh, you're lovely, have a sausage. And then they get really fat <coughs> and then they get poorly because they've got overweight. So, guide dogs. Guide dogs decided that they'll try and mix in Labradors with other breeds of dogs. And they found but the most reliable breed was the Labrador Retriever. So nowadays, if you see a guide dog out on the streets, it's probably going to be a Labrador Retriever. And that goes for every single dog there is. Now, who knows how old the puppies are when they start training? Anyone got any ideas? Five months? Younger? Younger? Really? Younger? Okay. Well, they're seven weeks. Oh, now, so these that puppies. Before after they leave the mother. That's well, leave the mother. they actually start training probably at six weeks because at six weeks they, they go up to the breeding centre with their mum. Right. And that's when they'll start coming across so other experiences. So they do lots of snuffle mats and things like that. So they just like explore a yeah. lot. And then at seven weeks they get placed with us, they're puppy raisers. Right. And that's when we start training them. And you start very, very, very small. Mm -hmm. But at seven weeks you're going to start introducing them to things um, little bit, little bit at a time. Um, now guide dogs have got their own breeding centre at Leamington in the Midlands. And they breed all their own dogs. So every dog that you see will be bred by guide dogs. Although there is a little add-on to that, because last year they didn't breed hardly any dogs because of oh there that pandemic thing, um, they've actually started now to look at bringing in some dogs from kennel club, kennel club bred dogs, because some of their breeding females are being retired, and so they won't be able to breed from them, and the, some of the younger ones are not quite old enough yet to have, mm. so they're going to have to bring in some puppies. So just for this year. There's going to be a, a small number that, that could come in from outside. They've got to vet them all and test them all to see they're all healthy and they've got the right temperament and lots and lots. But they are looking at some dogs that come from outside this year. So, it's a so at seven weeks, the puppies are taken away from their doggy mummies and they're taken away from their brothers and sisters and they're taken to their puppy raisers, which is volunteers like me and Pat. Now, do you think that sounds sad? That they're taken yeah. away from their puppy yeah. mums. Well, I'll tell you that when they get taken to their puppy raisers for the 
first few days, the puppy raisers give the new puppies lots of cuddles and they play lots of games with them. And very soon the puppies think, oh, I think this is a nice place to be. So they very quickly feel at home and then they can start their training. Now, what do you think is one of the first things that we have to teach our puppies? Uh, toilet training. Hey! Toilet <laughs> That's one of the very first things. So what we have to do, we have to look for the signs that the puppy wants to go to the toilet. And what they'll normally do is that the puppy will circle round on the floor and they'll start sniffing and that's a sign that they might want to do a toilet. So at that stage we pick the puppies up very very gently and we take them outside and we have to give them a command and the command we give them is do busy. So busy is the command. And when they've done their busy <laughs> then they get a little treat and very quickly the pups realise that if they do what they've been asked to do then they'll Where get they've a been treat. asked to do it. <laughs> and they get a treat. Now it's very, very important that the dogs learn where to go and do their toileting. Because we really don't want them to do it indoors, do we? Because yeah. that wouldn't be very nice. So we really have to teach them to do it outside and the command is busy. So that's one of the first things we teach them. Now what else do you think we have to teach our guide dog puppies? Anyone got any ideas? <coughs> Don't chew the furniture. Don't chew the furniture. That's a really, really good one that is. Well, the, the, how we stop that is by always watching what they're doing. And if they start chewing anything that they shouldn't be chewing, then we give them a toy. And we have to focus their attention on what they can do. So redirection. Yeah. What they can't. They're just like children. <laughs> just thinking it's just like ABA training. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the other really, really, really important things that guide dogs like is for their dogs to come back on their corner. Because that's quite important. <laughs> so when they're out on a, a free run, when they're off the lead, guide dogs call it a free run. Then we have to call the dog and they have to come back to us. Now some puppies you might not be very good at that. Now you can imagine when they're out on a run in the woods, when they feel they can meet other dogs and there'll be lots of smells and sniffs, so you might get distracted. So we've got a very, very good idea to bring the dogs back. And what we do, we blow a whistle. And the way that works is that when we first get the puppies, when we feed them, we have to get them really quiet, not jumping up and down, really relaxed, then we can put their bowl of food in front of them and we blow a whistle and we've all got whistles on our lead and Pat's got one on her ID badge somewhere. You blow the whistle and that's the sign to the pup that they can feed. The pup has its food and then the next time we do exactly the same thing and the puppy soon realises but when the whistle blows, it's time for feeding. So if we're out on a free run and the puppy isn't coming back on a voice call, then we blow the whistle and they'll come back because they think they're going to get fed. And that works with most dogs. Not every dog, but it works with most dogs. Do you give them anything when they come back? Yes. You have to give them a little treat. Yes. What's your question? Um, well... Well, is that a good thing, do you think, when they come mm. back? Everyone likes dog dogs. When they all will come together like in their life. That's right. Everyone likes They dogs. start forming a family. They do. With dogs and humans. They do. That's right. Yeah. And it's lovely to have a dog in your family, isn't it? Yes. What's your 
Can you hear the whistle or is that or is it like a dog whistle? I'm doing no, very, very No, no, well no, they're quiet and like we'll do it afterwards because right. at the moment they're sitting quiet and if we blow that whistle then they're gonna start running around. So at the end we'll show you what the whistle does. It's quite loud, it's not it's a silent whistle. It's not a silent whistle, it's not one not one of those pitched ones that only the dogs can hear, it is one that everybody can hear, so it is quite loud. Right. So. so we get the puppies at seven weeks and it's our job to make them into really nice, well-behaved dogs. So that when they're ready to go to big school and go back to guide dogs and do their guide dog training, the trainers don't have to concentrate on any good behavior. All they have to do is concentrate <coughs> on their guide dog training. So we have the dogs until they're about 14 or 15 months old and then guide dogs come back to our house one day in their van and they take our puppies away from us. Ooh. We know they're coming. Can't you just hide them when they come? It is sad and we all get sad when it happens but we know that our puppies are going on to do a really, really important job and we have to remember that don't get we are we're sad for probably a couple of days and then we think oh it was ever so nice having Lily but Lily's going on to do a really good job so we're having to stop <coughs> being sad. Now would you like me to tell you how a guide dog would help someone who can't see very well? Yeah. yeah. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you a story and you've got to imagine that I can't see very well and Susie is my guide dog. Okay, that's what you've got to do. So one day I decide that I want to go from my house to Bexley Heath and do some shopping. Now it's about two and a half miles away, so I'm going to get the bus. Now how do you think Susie's going to help me get the bus? Do you think she'll show me the way? Do you think she'll show me where the bus stop is? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I'll do, I'll get up and I'll put Susie's jacket on. Now does anyone know what sort of jacket a guide dog wears? Fully trained them? guide dog. Does anybody remember? Isn't it green? Is oh, it no, well, white. is that, is it orange? White. It's that fluorescent. I got it so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they have a white harness and it's it's fixed metal, so it comes up like a, a, a three it's sides a of an oblong. It's a handle. A handle. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they also have a lead like this. Oh. And then they have a, a bright fluorescent yellow flash across uh -huh. their chest. That's so that's where you think yeah, green yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it says guide dog written on it. I was a little bit right. <laughs> so I'll have to dress Susie in a guide dog coat and I'll say to Susie, find the bus stop. Susie will take me to the bus stop. But Susie's very clever <coughs> because if I'm walking on the pavement and someone has left their bins on the pavement or someone's parked a car on the pavement, because I can't see very well, I could walk into the bin, couldn't I? Or I could walk into the pavement. Well, Susie knows that that's dangerous, so she'll actually lead me round the bin or she'll lead me round the car. So Susie's keeping me safe. Now, what else might we come across on the pavement? It must be the macaroons. Really it must be the macaroons being dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone got any more ideas? Well, what about crossing roads? Crossing yeah. roads, mm. that's a very good one. Other things in the, on the pavement, there might be, it could be a big puddle. And if I walk to the puddle, I'd get wet, wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. Well, Susie would lead me around the puddle. There might be a hole in the pavement, I could fall down. And Susie would lead me around the hole. And then, when I come to another road, Susie will stop at the curb and she will sit down. And that is a sign to me there's a road that I've got to cross. Now, it's my responsibility to actually listen for the traffic. It's not
not Susie's responsibility to know that it's safe to cross. I have to listen for the traffic, and if I think there's nothing coming, then I will say to Susie, let's go, and that's the command for Susie to walk on. Now, Susie's very clever though, because if Susie sees a car coming, or something else that's dangerous, like a scooter, then she'll stop, and she won't let me walk, and she'll wait till it's clear, and then we can cross the road. Oh, yeah. So Susie's very clever, isn't she? And the other thing that Susie would do, or any, any train guide dog would do, and one thing we teach our puppies, is how to go up and down steps. Because obviously, if you're a blind person, you come to the end of a pavement and there's a flight of steps or some stairs in a shop or whatever, you don't know whether the steps are going down or whether the steps are going up because you can't see them. You just know that there might be some steps there. So the dogs are trained that they just go to the, the step and if their head is going down, then the blind person knows the steps are going down. If the head's lifted up, they know that the steps are going up. So they can feel for the dog's head depending on which direction the head's going. They'll be able to, and then the dog will lead them up the steps and down the steps. So that's very ask, important. You said that, um, let's say, for instance, you were going to Bexley Hink in regards to dog to take you to the bus stop. So before all of that happens, does a trainer work with the person? Yes. To see what, what routes so they, they, they want to take. So they learn their routes. Yeah, so the and dog And then once they know the routes, then the dog will know that route. Right. So, I mean, the blind person will know the route as well. Yeah. But obviously what the blind person won't know is what might have happened on that route since they last did it. So like Steve said, if it was bin day, and all, all like, you lived in Bexley, we had all the bins out on the pavement for weeks and weeks and weeks because we had a strike. Yeah. So consequently, if you were a blind person, the bins were out all the time. So the dog had to be able to get you around the bins or if there's suddenly a bit of roadworks going on and it comes up onto the pavement a bit, or the worst thing for a lot of blind people are where people park on the pavement and make the pavement too narrow. I mean, you'll yeah. know if you've got children, you or can't get a buggy through. Or, yeah. But obviously for a blind person, you could go banging straight into a van or something like that. So, so that's really important. So that's something yeah. that the dogs do. And another thing that the dogs give to somebody you can't see, because if you can imagine, you've now got Two of you, three of you wearing glasses here. If I took your glasses off, you'd probably struggle to see very well, wouldn't you? If I said Actually, to you, Actually, I can see you really fine without my glasses. Oh, well, you're lucky then. See? Clear? I can't clear. even see you clearly. Well, so you would know then. You